Throughout school, I could have cared less about math. I might not have done a single bit of math homework. I don't think I even cared enough to cheat. In 10th grade, I learned how to play drums and started a rock band with my homies. By college, I had begun producing music, which I was happy to ditch class to do. I dropped out after a few months and moved back to L.A. Over the following decade, I wrote and produced for musicians all around L.A. This was a daily thing for me, an obsession. I ended up signing a record deal as an artist and experienced many of the things a younger version of myself fantasized about. I thought that if I made it, I would feel good, but here I was at the age of 28, still anxious and depressed with low self-esteem. This was a wake-up call. I began to meditate and get serious about my health and my purpose, and over the following few years, my health journey really hit a stride. After restoring a joy for life, I developed a passion for health optimization. I wanted to take what I learned and package it for people, hoping to save someone from the mental pit I lived in through my teens and 20s. One beautiful spring day in Los Angeles, during a particularly focused time in my journey, I had a breakthrough that has completely reshaped my life. As if in the blink of an eye, I began to see the world mathematically. Not only was I looking around at the world and seeing the geometric underpinnings, but I developed an insatiable appetite for discussion on math, physics, philosophy, and science in general. During this same time, my yearning for spiritual understanding grew. I began to really stretch my roots out into the deep waters of ancient wisdom. One of the many things I explored was Jewish mysticism. This specifically caught my attention because of the rich mathematical tradition of these studies. Some people have wild spiritual visions, but because my imagination isn't very active, this form of spirituality that I could explore with pen and paper was very appealing. And I was seeing results in my life. The numerical dimension of Hebrew was increasing my peace and giving me scientific intuition. Scientific intuition comes from pattern recognition. Pattern recognition can get out of hand and reveal structures of no consequence. Despite knowing this intellectually, I still enjoy looking for patterns in places they shouldn't be. I've always been the type to go looking for things. For some reason, I can't quite remember the catalyst. I started looking up the first occurrence of the values of Hebrew words and phrases in the decimal expansion of pi. It started as a curiosity. Wouldn't it be cool if there's a message encoded in pi? I wanted to find magic, while not necessarily expecting to, just having fun. I looked up a handful of numbers over the course of a year or so, but when I looked up the number 3773, something caught my eye. It started simple. My train of thought went something like this. 444 is the value of Mikdash, which is a sanctuary and describes the Temple of Solomon, followed by 03070, which is a sequence that happens every 100,000 digits or so and has an elemental relationship to 3773. This was enough to interest me, and 6180 being the inverse of the golden ratio added to the intrigue. There are two ways numbers manifest in pi. The first is in the digits of the decimal expansion. The second is the ordinal place number or location where these numbers appear. In regards to 3773, this is the first occurrence, and this is the 3773rd place. I'll tie this all together. But before I go further, I want you to know that this first anomaly I found in Pi ended up not being an anomaly at all. I verified and cross-referenced the system with the numerical values of thousands of scriptures and words. There is a deep structure in pi. It's really there. And the implications for health and technology are immense. Okay, so back to this initial sequence I found. To show you the beauty here, I'll have to lay out a little context. There's a scene in Genesis where Jacob is blessing his 12 sons, and seemingly out of nowhere, not directed to any specific son, Jacob says, I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. Here it is in Hebrew. The word highlighted in red is for your salvation, and it's from the root yasha, meaning salvation or rescue. This is the root of the names Isaiah, Joshua, Hosea, and Jesus. In this case, the four letters in this phrase, for your salvation, spells out the name Yeshua, which is Jesus in Hebrew. And this is the first place these four letters appear together in the Torah. All the letters of this verse have a numerical value, and we can add them up to find the numerical value of the whole verse. I'll do that quickly. Yeshua is equal to 386, including the letter surrounding it, we get 836. The central word is associated with waiting or patience and equals 526. The final word, yod heh vav heh, translated in this verse as Lord, is equal to 26. 
We add up all these numbers to find that the value of the whole verse is 1,388, which I have highlighted in red. 1,388 is first occurring at the 3,761st place. Here's why that matters. The Hebrew year 3761 is year one of the Gregorian calendar, which traditionally represented the birth of Christ. This means that if Jacob, when he was blessing his sons, was giving them a hint as to how long they'd be waiting for salvation, he hit the date with the bullseye. At one point earlier in Jacob's story, he dreams a vision of heaven where God promises that all the families of the earth will be blessed by his seed. Upon awakening, he proceeds to anoint the head of a stone. This is the first anointing in the Bible, where anoint is the root of the word Messiah. Maybe Pi, being eternal, has a heavenly landscape, and Jacob memorized the point in the landscape where God showed him his descendant Yeshua blessing the nations. Could Jacob have been sharing this information with his sons? The word waiting is connected with the word for a line, a demarcation. Side note, at the birth of Jesus, the Magi presented treasure. This word for treasure is thesaurus and is also equal to 1388. Okay, so how is the number 3773 connected to all this? 3773 represents a special set of mirror primes, 37 and 73, that when multiplied together produce the semi-prime number 2701. 2701 is the value of Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here it is in Hebrew. Ancient and modern rabbis teach that this verse isn't just about the creation of heaven and earth, it is the creation of heaven and earth, encoded with the mathematical ratios that are holding the universe in existence. One of the biggest takeaways from quantum physics is that what the math is describing isn't necessarily anything other than math. What the universe may be is the complex relationship between values, an interference pattern. The seven words in this verse are the keys to understanding the seven-day creation narrative and how it relates to the human body, the structure of the Bible, and the design of the Temple of Solomon. An interesting side note is that Isaac Newton was studying Hebrew and the design of the temple as a coded blueprint of the cosmos during the time he was making the discoveries that would propel humanity into the scientific era. 3773 is a very potent representation of the blueprint encoded into Genesis 1-1 as an index of the mirror primes that produce its value. Let me show you what this has to do with the only story from Jesus' childhood. In Luke 2, there's a scene where a 12-year-old Jesus, being accidentally left behind in Jerusalem after Passover, is found in the temple where, to the amazement of all observing, he's insightfully questioning the teachers. If the 3,761st place represents the birth of Jesus, then his 12th year, where he's inside the temple, would be at the 3,773rd place, where 3773 represents the temple. 3773, as a representation of the temple, goes much deeper than I'll lay out in this video. But for the curious among you, here are a couple verses that both have a value of 3773 and reference the temple. Hopefully, this system will start opening up to you. Quick recap. The first time the name Yeshua appears in the Torah, it's in a verse whose numerical value correlates to year one of the Gregorian calendar via the 3,761st place in Pi. Counting 12 years from this point, we reach the 3,773rd place in Pi, and because this number correlates to the temple, it's symbolic of a 12-year-old Jesus in the temple, which may be why it's the only story from Jesus' childhood. In the same way that we can count back 12 places from the 3,773rd place to find the birth of Jesus, when we count back from the sequence 3773, we land at the number 913, which is the value of the first word of Genesis, Bereshit, which means, in the beginning. The book of John starts with the phrase, in the beginning was the word. Continuing to look at these numbers like a sort of mythological calendar, 913 marks the crucifixion of Jesus some 33 years after his birth. The number 3276 that proceeds from 913 is Genesis 15:1, where the word of the Lord first appears to Abraham. Altogether, this paints a vivid picture while still being seen only through a glass darkly. Matthew 5:18. For I tell you truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Pi is not physical, and the relationship between these numbers existed before the earth existed. 
For this to be any different means that the shape of the circle would have to be different, in which case the universe as we experience it would not exist. Like I said before, this discovery blossomed out into a project that I'm convinced is at the core of a new science. When I mapped all of the numerical values of the Bible to the place of their first occurrence in Pi, I found that the entire thing is filled with this level of narrative complexity. The implications here are paradigm smashing, and I wouldn't be so driven to bring it to people's attention if I didn't think it immediately addresses issues surrounding depression, anxiety, and terminal illness. Let's take care of our beautiful planet and the wonderful communities living on it. If this interests you at all, then subscribe, because we're just getting started.